Okay, assalamu alaikum, shabab. Welcome back to the class. Today we have a quiz. And um, before I talk about the quiz, let me talk about the homework. Homework number four has errors in the calculation. Student already recognized this and they sent me an email. And um, I don't need to tell you the details. I think the reason behind this error is not because it was solved in the wrong way. كلكم تعرفون يا شباب بأنه إحنا دائما نحاول إن إحنا نجيب أسئلة للطلاب جديدة غير متوفرة في الداتابيس اللي يتناقلونها الطلاب. السبب هو إن إحنا نعطيكم فرصة to challenge yourself. لكن للأسف يعني الحياة أصعب من أن هي تكون بالسهولة هذه أنا أذكر مرة ولا بأضيع الوقت أذكر مرة جاني طالب هنا في المكتب وقال لي أنه بما معناه أنتوا يا دكاترة الماشين ديزاين قاعدين تسوون فينا جريمة ومن هالكلام ليه؟ لأن جات فترة من الفترات كنا نحط الأسئلة من من الكتاب قلت له طيب ليه؟ قال لي لأن السولوشن مانيوال موجودة فقال هذه غلطاتكم احنا غ... احنا مو غلطانين اذا نقلنا من السولوشن مانيوال ما دام السولوشن مانيوال موجودة احنا طلاب راح ننقل منها فأنتوا غلطتكم انكم انتم ما تعطونا اسئلة اي نو ويزنت ذيس كورس ات واز ات واز دايناميكس اي ثينك بت اني واي اي ام نوت هير ان بوزيشن تو To talk about the student and is he right, is he wrong? For me, I'm definitely, definitely wrong. Can I can tell you to say? I mean, they say the money, the money, the money is not going to teach the money. So you say, I see, if the money of the bank is open, I will go to it. I don't know. It's not halal, haram. This is another thing. I'm going to steal. The wrong thing, the wrong thing. The bank is supposed to secure it. Who is teaching us the money? المهم احنا في الماشين ديزاين وي ار تراينج اور بيست يا شباب تو برينج كويستشنز بس از يو سي وي ار بي وي ار ان ا فايت ا بيج وور مع السولوشن مانيوالز رغبات الطلاب كانهم ينقلون رغبات الطلاب كانهم يخشون من بعض والان ريسنتلي ذا شق وما ادري ومواقع everything از 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 كامينج تو ون اند يا شباب If you want to become an engineer, a good one, you want to change the industry, you want to impact something in your life, go and study alone. When I say alone, yeah, I don't cheat. Of course, of course, talk with your friends and others. But this, this is all a personal choice. So what appears to me, you know, the doctor, it wasn't me, but the professor, the homework, probably took it from past years. And in the past years, Shabab, because people get tired making problems, they start to recycle problems. And when they recycle problems, they reuse them. They try to change a few numbers just to make it different. So sometimes, by mistake, they change number and they forget that something in the solution will change. And uh, they don't change it accordingly in the solution. And this is why there are errors. But uh, I have to fix it. I'll try my best to fix it for you and then post it again. As for the project problem, which is problem number one, uh, I am going to post a sample procedure for it. I can't post solution for you. Uh, yeah, Shabab, the reason why the coordinator decided that one problem number one is from your project is that we will help with the students we will help them to finish task 11 if we don't help them to finish task 11 what do they do? they come on the 14th December which is the day of the last class in the university وبيقولون يلا نبغى نحل تاسك 11 و12 و15 وما ادري. Very typical, right? So he said let's push them by putting it as a homework. Now the truth is I am not 
going to ask my grader to grade the problem number one. I am not. Why? Very simple. Very simple, yeah, shabab. The grader, if he solves task 11, he needs to be me. Why? هل تقبلون ان انا لما اخلي الجريدر يصححها؟ الجريدر طالب This is design problem It has no specific solution يجي ويحط لك صح وانت تعتمد انه صح بعدين تجي في الاسبوع الاخير وتسلم البروجكت واجي انا احط لك غلط ويصير الكونفليكت صح؟ انه اوه oh, الجريدر قال انا صح وانت تقول انت غلط I can't teach a grader to grade like 62 possibilities of solutions i can't it's هو مفروض مطلوب منا انه هو ياخذ السولوشن ويشوف الطالب اللي حل على السولوشن ويعطيه درجات انا لو حليت البروجكت كومبليتلي with my hand my solution will not be exactly like yours i hope you understand this now with respect to the quiz today I uh, a quiz room short yes it's 10 minutes a quiz 10 minutes and then as I am did before I will shut off the quiz and then I will give you five minutes to upload your solution now there is a good chance that student will not know how to solve the quiz in 10 minutes so they will use the five minutes it's up to you you want to use the five minutes, use it. But if you don't upload the solution, you will have no solution. Emails, not acceptable. Do you understand? So you should understand that if we are in a classroom, I intentionally brought a short problem. You have to believe this. مو تقول لا والله انا الا ابغى استخدم ال5 minutes تبي تستخدمها استخدمها if you don't have time to upload the solution it is your responsibility not mine i will also ask you please to write your name your id and even the section number just to have all information in that sheet to recognize that this is you okay don't just upload it although the blackboard will capture your name your id but write it in the paper as well. I will remind you by this uh, on this uh, before the before we get started. So we are going to start the quiz just 15 minutes before the lecture ends. Okay, all right. Now we stopped here last time and we talked about bolt string, and we also talked about the idea that uh, bolt is made up from uh, steel and other materials, but mostly from steel, I mean. And we know that uh, uh, steel, like other alloys, has a string. But what matters is that with respect to bolt, we said that the, if this is the yield strength of the material that the bolt is made up from, and this is the ultimate, it, it turns out that there is a stress which is below the yield and it is called the proof strength. This proof strength better represent the failure of the bolt. And by the way, I forget, I always tell you that I am going to explain what is AT later, but I didn't. And let me explain it to you very well. Let's say, ya shabab, let's say we have a, a, a sample, a specimen with a certain diameter, okay? Um, um, D1. And then we made another one with a certain diameter, D2. And then we did another one with D3. So what happened is that we are going to take a bolt. So there is a thread. Let's say this is M10, which is metric number 10. Okay. And let's say it is fine threading, all the detail. All right. Because the tensile stress area is different for each kind of bolt. 
So let's say that there is a specific bolt. And then what did we do? We pulled the bolt and then the bolt failed. We pulled it in tension until the bolt failed. Now, we know that it fails here. And here we have a thread. So we don't know, actually, the thread is going in out like this. So we don't know exactly what is the area to use. So what, what do they do? They go and test sample number D1. Okay? Exactly the same way. Okay? It's a sample with a diameter D1. And let's say it fails here. And then they take, uh, this is D1. And then they take D2. And then it failed here. And then they take D3, and then it fails right there, almost. Of course, it's not going to be dead center like this on top. But what happened? When they get a diameter from a smooth sample that follows the same behavior as the threaded one, they say, OK, what is the area here? It is y over 4 D3 squared. They calculate this area, and they say that this area is the tensile stress area for that guy. Now, that tensile stress area will not, you know, might, I have actually never calculated it, but it's going to be different than the area over here. Do you understand? But this is how they do it. That's why it was only determined experimentally. Do you understand? And... This is very essential because we are going to talk about it uh, in, uh, later. So what happened over here is that we can see that this is the ultimate strength of the bolt. This is the yield strength of the bolt. And this is the proof strength. So the proof strength is going to be used as a failure marker for bolt. Okay. And what is it? We will talk about it later. Now, what I want to show you, maybe I should zoom this out, is this table, table uh, eight, nine. And if you focus on it, this is the SAE. SAE, Shabab, stands for Society of Automotive Engineering. Okay. This is the SAE. It is in inches. As you see, you remember when we said the grade five? in the problem we solved before. Grade five is here. That's a grade five. That's when they say grade five, you should come to this row. Now, as you see, for grade five, we have size range, which is inclusive. So we have a quarter to one, and then we have one eighth to one and a half. If you remember, the, the, the problem that we solved before was half. Half SAE grade five. So half means we should be in this range because it's between So what does this mean? It means that the proof strength for this bolt is what? Is 85. Now, if you have different size, the proof strength is get affected. Okay, so this is the proof strength. This is the minimum tensile strength. And this is the minimum yield strength. Why is that? Why is that? Why it's saying minimum? Because there are uncertainty. Okay, there are uncertainty. So what do they do? They test many samples. And from the test, what do, let's say, for example, Ya Shabab, they tested three samples, okay? And they get the test like this. So what do they do? Instead of reporting the average, they go and report the minimum one. The minimum one, just to be safe. So that's why we have the minimum. So I think you understand. If we say grade one, then we have this size range. If we have grade two, we have two ranges. And each one has its strength. Proof strength, minimum yield, and minimum uh, ultimate strength. Of course, this is the material 
all of it is st- uh, steel, uh, medium carbon, quench and timbered, low carbon, martensite, quench and timber, and so on. Okay. Now, we should have the same, which is over here, for the metric. So if you see, this is ASTM, the American Society for Mechanical Engineering. And look, what do we have here? We have designations. And they are a little bit different, but they will teach you. I mean, you will understand. We have a designation of ASTM A307. Then, again, we have a size, inclusive. And then we have minimum approve, minimum tensile, and minimum yield. So these are type 1, type 2, type 3, and so on. This is the ASTM. And now you know where to look for them. If you see A, 3, 5, 4, grade B, C, all of that big name is the name of the bolt. You come and look which size is, your, is the nominal diameter of the bolt, and then you can know the property. If you see here, sir, alloy steel and minimum, medium carbon steel and, and so on. Then... We have the metric one, which is very important, of course. We know that metric is more common. Now, um, for the metric one, we have a classes. Now, you will be surprised. Be careful when you see four point, class 4 .6, 4.6, 4.8, 5.8, 8.8, 9.8, 10.9. So be careful. This is, this is a class type this isn't a diameter ya shabab or length this is the class type it's very confusing i don't know why do they do this but anyway so what do we have we have the size the size include m5 to m36 what does this mean metric five millimeter nominal diameter to metric 36 millimeter diameter okay 36 and this goes, look, the minimum roof is 225. The minimum uh, tensile is 400 uh, strength, and the yield is 240. Of course, you will always realize that the proof is smaller than the yield. This is what we told you. The proof is always smaller than the yield. Remember this figure. The yield is here. The proof is down there. Okay. Good. Now, if we know the bolt strength, uh, and now we can go and study the 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 joint. Now, خلاص عرفنا the stiffness. We know the stiffness. We know the material of the bolt. Now we can study. The, the joint. Now, in general, yeah, Shabab, I am not talking about the fact that in the TG would be block of cheese and then you put a washer on top, the washer on the bottom, and then you, you put a screw and then you start screwing. As you screw more, okay, what will happen? The cheese will be crushed and the whole cheese joint is gone. We're talking mostly here in mechanical engineering about bolting uh, stiff material. I'm not saying, guys, that this is the case. Yeah, we use it with, with, with wood, and wood is not as strong as steel. And in that case, you need to be very careful. But let's talk about industry. Let's talk about our engineers here graduating and going to our industry around us. Everything is made up from metals. And with metals, you're talking here about uh, flanges that are huge, very thick, made up of hard carbon steel. So failure of the member is a possibility, no doubt about it. But if you think about it, a big lump of material, very thick. You need a crane to take it up. And then a tiny little bolt. 
with a diameter which is uh, two centimeter, one centimeter, it doesn't matter with too many threads in it. The fact is we are afraid mostly of the weak link. The weak link is the bolt, not the member. هنا أنا لما أقول الكلام هذا قاعد أعتمد أن أنا أتكلم مع mechanical engineers mechanical engineers mostly at least in Saudi Arabia we deal with machines made from metals تروح طبعا the possibility that you are having non-metal is also there but they have different joining methods so I am going to still assume that the weak link is the bolt not the member Okay, now what can happen? What can happen? When you screw the joint and when you apply the load, the possibility that the bolt will crack. And then that's it. One bolt crack, then we start having leaking. Okay, what is the other possibility? Is that due to the load, the, the bolt somehow did not fail, but plastically deformed and then it got a little bit longer and you lose you lose the clamping but there is no clamping what's the point of that no if you lose the clamping the whole joint is compromised it's over so what are we going to do we are going to assume a very typical condition. When we have an external load, we will call it P, okay? Applied on the bolted joint. Now, what you should know is that until now, guys, before I start the car, before I start the car, what is the condition of the bolt in the car? They are bolted, right? ولا ولا لا يا شباب؟ آه صحيح. Yeah, yeah, they are bolted. The engine is screwed, everything there. What الآن أنت قبل ما تطلع بالسيارة تفحط السيارة already bolted والبولت مسكين هو already under tension. ما هو لما جاء من المصنع هم كربوه. And it is under tension since they made it in the factory. And that tension, we will call it Fi. What is it? The preload. هو دائما preloaded. وبعدين تيجي أنت وتأخذ السيارة تطلع في نص الليل وتفحها. طبعا I'm sorry, شباب. Just typical uh, interesting story. And uh, I, I assume you don't do this anymore. So. Um, and and now the bolt is broken and the preload and you went and you did it on it. Of course, the other way is that you are a very disciplined driver and you are driving, but suddenly there is a hole and it falls on the car and it falls on the car and then the bolt will be loaded even more. Okay, so the, what I am trying to explain to you is that there is a preload. وانت بتحط عليه لود. And this is when you, when, you, when you look now when we explain this راح تعرف ليش في الحياه دائما ما في one bolt سياره they cannot clamp it with one bolt because preload will be huge and if it is huge you don't have a lot of room you don't have a lot of room you are a little bit عند البروف strength so the only way to make it safe is to put too many bolts. Too many bolts. You have to put too many bolts in order to distribute the load. Otherwise, one bolt, little load, and it will shoot beyond the 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 uh, the brute strength. So first thing first is the preload. We know the preload. Now, then we talk about the total load, P total, which is the tensile load applied to the joint. Tell a joint. Now, then we will have, when you apply the load on the joint, which is this one, okay, part of it, this is something you need to understand, 
part of the load, okay, part of this load will go to the member and part of the load will go to the bolt. You see that? Now, so we need to know how much is the extensor load per bolt. And then a khamsa, like a tire or sitter. Then uh, if the load is 100, I need to divide it by five. If the load, if I have five bolts, if I have six, I need to divide it by six. Then we need, we define PB for the portion which goes to the bolt. And then PM for the portion that goes to the member. And this is very nice story. Why? Because you think that the bolt has the fatir and the skin, who will have the alga? No. In reality, part of the load will go to the bolt and part of it will go to the member. Interestingly, the person who will decide how much will go to the bolt, how much will go to the member, who is C. C is the constant which is related to KB and KM. Do you understand? So, if we know that the external load, let's say the external load is 100 kilonewton, and let's say for the sake of argument that 50, no, let's say 40% of it so 40 kilonewton went to the bolt then automatically the 60 will go to the member now the bolt don't forget it has 40 don't be happy there is also preload the preload if i could be 20 kilonewton or something so you will have 40 plus 20 the member however what is it gonna have the member is under compression by equilibrium, the preload will cause tension in the bolt and compression in the member. So the member is It's happy. Why? Because if for the member will be P, which is how much? The 60. But if you put Fi with the bolt, here you take Fi from the member. Why? لأنه أنت عندك ال ال اللود إنتنشن والمنبر is under compression so you subtract them to know what is the resultant but the bolt you have the bolt pre tension عنده في pre load حطيت عليه tension زيادة do you see that this يا شباب concept will explain to you why in the industry شفتوا ممكن صور ل wind turbines and other you can see maybe 200 bolts connected. This is the reason. The bolt is already under pretension. My only secure way is what? It's to put too many bolts. Even if load bolt, You understand? So, C is the fraction of the external load carried by the bolt. يعني معناها إنه البولت B is equal to the C multiplied by the total load. I mean the load going to the bolt. So this is the fraction, the fraction of the load. طيب إذا إذا الفراكشن اللي أنا قلت عنه أربعين في المئة معناها إنه B M شي ساوي one minus C multiplied by P صح ولا لا؟ So one minus C is the fraction that goes to the member. Of course N is be careful N here. Whenever we say N in this chapter, we mean uh, either the number of thread per inch. So you have to be careful. But you will understand it from the statement. Okay, of the question here N is the number of bolts. How many bolts are there? Okay. So this is the story. First, we need to find the, the number of load, the amount of load that goes to each bolt, ya shabab. Now it is 10.30, ya shabab. Within a few minutes, we'll start. So P is the load that goes per bolt. So if I have one, two, three, four, five, six bolts. 
and there is a B total, which is 120, for example, then P, each bolt will have B, which is equal to 120 divided by six. Okay, now, what is this? This one is P, the member, divided by the stiffness of the member, which is equal to P for the bolt, divided by the stiffness of the bolt. And if I multiply by Km, I will get Pm, which is equals to P, bolt, multiplied by Km, divided by Kb. And since the total load, eventually, total load هو عبارة عن مجموع load على البولت مع مجموع load على الممبر. So, I will end up getting this relation, look at it, which says that the force on the bolt is equals to Kb divided by Kb plus Km multiplied by P, which is, ya shabab, equals to Cp. This is what I told you in the previous slide. And then the ratio that goes to the member is equals to 1 minus C multiplied by P. These numbers will become very clear when we have, um, uh, so, uh, when we solve an, uh, an example. So remember that C is called the stiffness constant of the joint, which is Kb, if you remember, and Km, where you use a frustum and other, okay? The only thing you should know is that the bolt has a force applied to it, which is equals to P, B plus Fi. And this, if we substitute P, PB, which is CP, as we said before, and we add to it Fi, this value, this equation is valid if Fm, which is the force in the member, is less than zero. Why? Why Fm should be less than zero? force على الممبر يا شباب why should it be zero uh, it's the, in the opposite direction of uh, the force in the bolt because so it's what in does compression mean? yes it's in compression if you يا شباب المعيار حقك هو ال FM إذا FM الforce على الممبر resultant force على الممبر صارت زيرو أو بوزيتيف which is not gonna go positive هي بس تصير زيرو معناها أنت الآن مخك هنا شو يقول؟ يقول يا إن البولت خلاص على وشك ينكسر والجوينت از لوز طقة واحدة وتنكسر أو إنه البولت انكسر خلاص انتهى الموضوع ما في كومبريشن ما في كلامبي ذا جوينت از از أوفر أوكي So um, I think we will stop here. Uh, we will continue, inshallah, next to class. Uh, I would like now to ask you to focus with me, Ashaba. Uh, first of all, to me, I don't need to.